news at sunrise. The government shutdown enters day 12. Democrats are preparing to take over the House, but today President Trump is trying to make a deal with congressional leaders. And the changing makeup of Portland City Council. This morning, Joanne Hardesty will be sworn in as the first black woman to serve on the council. And a shocking start to the new year in Southeast Portland after a bullet flies into a family's home. This morning, police are searching for a suspect. Plus, breaking overnight, a train crash in Denmark kills at least six people. How severe weather is hampering emergency responders. And a historic New Year's lottery drawing. Somebody is holding the winning Mega Millions ticket for the jackpot worth more than 425 million bucks. Good morning. The commutes all around the metro area look good. You can see no delays on all the major freeways. All of our drive times are where they should be. We have a closure on 99W between Southwest Cyple Road and uh, Southwest 124th. We also have this closure. Northeast Halsey is closed in both directions at 172nd Avenue in Gresham because of a hit and run. Police say a truck crashed into a power pole and that pole is now hanging too low for traffic to get through. So PGE crews are checking this out and they expect the road to stay closed for several hours while they secure that line. Boy, it has just been a mess this morning so busy. far. Yeah. Thank you for the update. Well, good morning. Thanks for waking up with us on this Wednesday. Now we do want to talk about weather this morning because things are pretty foggy. It can be dicey in your neighborhood. Uh, this is some video from Jansen Beach this morning. We've had our crew out driving around all over the area, kind of checking out how the fog is looking in your neighborhood. Rod, I know you've been really keeping an eye on this. We have, and quite frankly, the fog so far hasn't worsened to the point that I thought it would, but it's still uh, well before sunrise and just keep in mind if you don't go out the door until let's say seven o'clock or 730, the fog could all of a sudden worsen quite a bit before the sun pops up. The map right now actually looks the best it's looked. We have a half a mile visibility up along the Columbia River, the one dense fog pocket with a quarter of a mile visibility up in Scappoose. Salem's been reporting some fog as well. There you can see that white area right now showing up mainly uh, closer to Corvallis it looks like. Uh, so we're at 31. It is freezing out there. A lot of you are in the 20. It's a cold morning and with fog slow to clear in spots, many of you may struggle to hit 40 degrees. Also, real quick, we're monitoring an air stagnation advisory posted through this afternoon. Air quality mostly moderate this hour. There's actually one spot over Portland where it's considered to be unhealthy for sensitive health groups. We'll have more in your forecast shortly. OK, thank you for the heads up, Rod. It's 602. We begin with the latest on the partial government shutdown. The holiday is over, but 800,000 government employees are either sitting at home this morning or they're working without pay. Yeah, this is day 12 of the shutdown. We want to get out to Tracy Potts, who is live on Capitol Hill. And Tracy, you can explain maybe what lawmakers are doing to try and end this shutdown. Well, today they're meeting with the president, but they're talking about the wall that Democrats don't want to fund with the White House saying just this morning that the president's given them a reasonable good faith offer, hasn't heard back from Democrats and that their plan that doesn't include border security, he says, is a non-starter. Smithsonian Museums and the National Zoo closed for the first time today as the partial government shutdown continues. It's a showdown over President Trump's border wall with Mexico. Democrats refuse to give him $5 billion to build it. This is all a, cr a crisis that the president has manufactured and he's dragging Republicans into it. Today he's inviting top Republicans and Democrats to the White House for a briefing on the wall Democrats fear it's a stunt and doubt the president is ready to negotiate. They're planning a vote as soon as they take over the House tomorrow. The House will be in order. They have two plans. Both would reopen the government. Neither would fund the wall. Then the burden will be on the Republicans because the Democrats will have acted. But the Senate, still controlled by Republicans, is unlikely to send President Trump something he won't sign. The only thing that matters, the only thing is whether what President Trump and Leader Schumer can agree to. That's Chuck Schumer, the Senate's top Democrat. Let's make a deal, the president tweets to incoming House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. At this point, it's not clear what that deal might be. 
And we're also watching a Washington Post op-ed that's getting a lot of attention today from incoming Utah Republican Senator Mitt Romney. He criticizes the president's character, saying that he's not risen uh, to the, the office that he holds. Uh, Romney coming in, he'll be sworn in tomorrow with a lot of other new lawmakers. And their first job, Brenda and Ashley, will be to get this government running again. All right, we'll see what happens. Tracy, thank you for the update. The Today Show is going to look at how the shutdown is impacting national parks across the country. Their coverage starts at 7 o'clock right after sunrise. Today is the first day on the job for Portland City Commissioner-elect Joanne Hardesty. She'll be sworn into office this morning, becoming the first black woman to serve on the council. Hardesty defeated Loretta Smith back in November. She replaces longtime Commissioner Dan Saltzman. Hardesty previously served as president of the Portland chapter of the NAACP. Oregon Senator Jeff Merkley will kick off the new year with a series of town halls. He will meet with people this morning at the East Portland Community Center. Senator Merkley plans to talk with Oregonians about the challenges facing the country. He's recently been in the national spotlight for trips to the U.S.-Mexico border and advocacy for migrant rights. Now, these town halls are open to the public and include other stops across the state on Thursday and Friday. Also this morning, we are hearing from a Southeast Portland woman who woke up New Year's morning to find a bullet hole in her house. Her name is Emmy Sperandio. She le lives on 83rd Avenue in the Lent neighborhood. She says sometime late Monday night or maybe early Tuesday morning, a bullet came flying into her house. It went through the exterior wall, then passed through a television before hitting a second wall. There's nothing I can do differently. I mean, it's our house. We, there's nothing we can change. If we want to sit in the living room and be a family, that's what we're going to do. It's just going to be a little scarier now. And yeah, no doubt. And on top of all that, police say they have not made any arrests. In Cornelius, a man is in custody accused of firing a gun into his neighbor's home while celebrating New Year's. Officers arrested 46-year-old Juan Humberto Garfias Campos. He is facing multiple charges. Police say he fired several shots into the air just after midnight. Several bullets hit his neighbor's home. No one was hurt. It's 6.06, now time for some stories making national headlines in your morning rush. At least six people died and 16 are injured after a train wreck in Denmark this morning. A high-speed train was hit by part of a freight train traveling in the opposite direction. Severe weather made it difficult for emergency responders to reach the scene. It's on a bridge linking Denmark's two major islands. There are new clashes on the U.S. border with Mexico. Yesterday, U.S. authorities fired tear gas at migrant crowds trying to breach the border fence. According to Customs and Border Protection, the migrants were throwing rocks and preventing agents from helping children being passed over the barbed wire fence. 25 migrants were detained. A former U.S. Marine is in custody on espionage charges. 48-year-old Paul Whelan was arrested in Moscow on Friday. Russian authorities say he was caught during a, quote, espionage operation, but they didn't give any other details. Whelan's family says he's innocent and was in Moscow to attend a wedding. NASA began the new year with a record-setting space mission. The New Horizons spacecraft flew by what's called the Ultima Thule. It's a tiny, icy object more than 4 billion miles from Earth. Scientists say it'll take almost two years for the spacecraft to send back all of its observations. And a lucky person is ringing in the new year by becoming a multi-millionaire. Somebody in New York bought the winning ticket in the Mega Millions jackpot it's worth $425 million. The next drawing on Friday will be 40 million. And that's your morning rush. It is eight after now. 2019 is getting off to a rough start for a Vancouver family. A father of two walked out of work on New Year's Eve to find the tires missing from his car. So take a look. This is what Joey Kirkendall found after getting off work. Yeah, somebody took three of his tires. They just left the rear passenger side tire. The young dad now has a message for these thieves. I would say shame on them. What's going through your head when you're propping up my vehicle and you see two kids' car seats in the back? 
Yeah, that's just awful. Kirkendall says it could cost more than $600 to replace them. Now, to make matters worse, he has hospital bills to pay for. His little son just spent the day, a day rather, in the ICU for bronchitis. Now, he's still waiting to hear from the insurance company to see what will be covered. But in the meantime, Joey's friends have started a GoFundMe page to help them pay the bills. It's 6.09. We want to give you a live look outside. It is cold out there on this Wednesday. There's dense, patchy fog. Some of the fog is freezing, so those roads could be slick. That's a live picture from our photographer, Eric Patterson. He's been out and about all morning in Drive 8. So right now he's in the Delta Park area in North Portland. Eric, what are conditions where you are? What are you seeing? Hey, good morning, guys. Um, Happy New Year as well. Um, I'm turning north here on Denver off of uh, Delta Park. And until I arrived at Delta Park, I had been all over the place. I'd been to Hillsboro, Scappoos, Savvy Island, through North Portland. And I wasn't convinced that these dense fog alerts were real because I have a sense Rod's got a little string on one and he's pulling it around. <laughs> but actually, I'm seeing a little fog now. So. It's floating around out there, and I think I may have finally caught up to caught it. So I felt like a Washington Husky defensive end or something oh. at the Rose Bowl. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, he's taking, I like Eric being <laughs> a little snarky this morning. Yeah. <laughs> a little saucy. A little saucy with Rod. Well, and I've been Thanks, Eric. <laughs> blaming Eric for not finding the fog. Ooh. That's right. That I've been talking about. <laughs>